Jane, if we could start with you, will you take us through uh, the path to the screen of this of this piece? How do we get here? Um, well, it was uh, a long, long time ago, uh, way back in, way way back in the day. Um, when I did a very different job at the BBC and a, um, a brilliant young writer, um, and he's still a brilliant young writer, uh, called Peter Moffat, wrote a five-hour miniseries under the title Criminal Justice that I don't know, some of you may remember. Um, and I felt very much as I got on a plane at the end of 2008, for it was a long time ago, um, and went to Los Angeles to start a new life um, with Julie Gardner, not literally with Julie Gardner, but <laughs> with Julie Gardner. Um, and I, I just felt it was an unfinished conversation, that there was more in that piece that could be said in the US than we, in our mean way in the BBC, only giving Peter five hours to make the piece, um, had been able to say. And uh, so one of the first things I did when I arrived in Los Angeles was to go to HBO and say, have you guys seen this? You should look at it. It's brilliant. Do you think there's something to be done? Um, what would it say about the American criminal justice system? And they said, yeah, but you've got to get a really good writer. I mean, a really, really good writer. I mean, someone like Stephen Zalian. Um, and, and I went, right, OK. And, um, and so I, this was around. July 2009 and I met Steve it, I think it will be almost a seven years when this transmits since we first met and um, and I Steve had looked at it and I shyly asked him if he'd like to write it and I spent the last seven years of my life shyly asking Steve if he would like to write a bit more direct it direct a bit more finish it, whatever, um, what would Steve like to do? And, and so it went on. And somehow Steve coming on and saying that he would do this piece made it into the night of over a long period of time and took it on a very, very different journey. And Steve, can you say what was it that attracted you to, to the material and to the story? Um, well, first of all, you know, uh, uh, the, you know, Peter Moffat's Criminal Justice is a wonderful miniseries, and I, I wouldn't even have thought about doing this if it wasn't for that. Um, I loved it. Um, and um, just to clarify one thing here, <laughs> uh, if we go back to 2009, I said that I wouldn't be able to ride it, oh, <laughs> so you should get a really good rider. <laughs> And that would be Richard you Price. You did eventually say that. That's yes. Absolutely okay. Right, yeah. So then Richard yeah. came on, and then and then I think I said, um, maybe I'll direct one, the first right. one, right? And then I, I really didn't want to think of it beyond that yeah. because the, you know you, you you do a you know pilot, they, they may not want to re uh, make the rest of it. So, you know, I didn't invest myself too much at the beginning, um, and then very gradually, both Richard and myself got. Um, began to see what I think what, what it could be. You know, little by little, really was script to script to script from episode to episode. And so it really did, um, um, you know, grow to become sort of the size that it wanted to be. And, 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 it, and, and we were able to kind of keep the tone of it constant by the two of us, you know, being involved in it and not bringing on a whole bunch of writers and a whole bunch of directors. And James Marsh did do one of them. And then, but uh, you know, for, for the rest of it, the, the, you know, we did it. So, and um, yeah, so that, that's, you know, I sort of got sucked in <laughs> gradually, you know, but it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, it started with a great pedigree. Yeah. And so. We got sucked in gradually and we didn't let him go. But I, I think it is, it is worth saying in a way that actually it was, really brilliant that HBO gave the space to be able to go on that journey, that, that we were, you know, we did a pilot that Steve was able to do and then he could write, you know, Richard write a bit more and then have a think about it and the number of episodes it was became, that Richard and Steve wanted were the number of episodes. It was a great example of what broadcasters should do really, which is kind of bend to the project rather than getting the project to bend to the broadcaster. And Richard and I had never, we, really hadn't done any TV, so we, we approached it as a movie, and so things like episodes weren't determined really until kind of, you know, after the whole thing was written. We had like 500 pages of script, and now we had to start trying to parse it up and figure out how to make it into episodes, but in our minds, it was one long movie, basically. I mean, you've written and directed on 
many different subjects. Was there anything specific about this story or this subject matter that, that I don't know, that spoke to you or that appealed to you? I'm wondering why you chose this. I mean, I'm all I'm always interested in 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 things that I don't know a lot a lot about. You know, I mean, I don't write about what I know. I write about what I can find out about. And the justice system was something that you know I really honestly didn't know that much about. And um, uh, and so it was a learning experience for me. And I get very into, as you can see from this, the detail of how all of this works. And I think that the only way that you can you can know that is to do the kind of research we did or get arrested. You can do it that way too, you know. <laughs> you know maybe that's quicker. But, but I mean, the, everything you see in here is really based on something very specific. And, um, and so, you know, taking this story through, you know, uh, uh, which is what the series does, you know, from the, the, the night of the arrest all the way through to the end of the case was, was something that appealed to me. You know, it was like I, I, I hadn't tried something like that. And, um, and I knew it would be an opportunity to not only investigate the process in, in detail, but also the characters and their behavior in detail. And there aren't, you know, you're not going to find a lot of, you know, heroes and villains in this. It's regular people doing their job. And uh, it's, you know, the, the, and, and the, but the system itself, you know, exists no, kind of no matter how, 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 how they do their job. As, as this other thing. Uh, John, we haven't seen much of your character yet, but could you tell us a little bit more about John Stone and how he develops in the, in the second episode? No. A man, who <laughs> a man who doesn't think anything. No, no I, don't, I don't want to say anything. Uh, uh, well, he just, you know, he connects, and it's written, you know, that he sees this young man, and he just connects to him. And in some way, I think that happens in life. Sometimes you see something and something occurs to you, and it can be almost more about yourself than it can be about the other person, too. And uh, he gets involved in something that is a little bit beyond him, because he's one of those people who doesn't like to go to trial. You can't really compartmentalize his feelings. He, ha he has all the capability, I think, of being a good lawyer, but he just, that's not, like, in his, it's not within his, in his nature, it's not, a, it doesn't agree with him that way, and that's why he has all these other ailments. Uh, but I thought it was an interesting, you know, beautifully written piece. All the characters were, and, and him being one of them. And I was very fortunate with, with Riz, not because he's here to say that, but that I was able to connect with him in a way, in a very organic way. And you know, we were in a situation, we really didn't know each other at all. And uh, it was really easy in some ways, uh, uh, to, to, to kind of bond with him. But I just thought, you know, it, it reminded me of reading a, a Russian novel, you know, like reading a Dostoevsky book about the criminal justice system. And it's, you know, with Steve and with Richard, you're in, two, you know, you're in the hands of two people who are really, really talented, and really, really smart, and you have all these different levels of uh, character. And I thought it was a real opportunity to dig in, and, uh, and you know, and go somewhere with it. And then, uh, I mean, Riz, you have a character who is pretty much from the outset told to say nothing, do nothing, give absolutely nothing away. And obviously, for an actor, but that doesn't leave you with a lot to work with. How did you approach playing a character who is who is, <laughs> who is buttoned up from the start <laughs> and do it so well? I should Steve say. Steve would put the camera in really interesting places. <laughs> <laughs> Does all the work. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, I mean, there's there's a lot going on, in, you know, inside the character's head and stuff, and he's got plenty on his plate. So it was often enough just to kind of occupy yourself with that. And you know, as John said, they just they just these guys have just written a world that is so um, immersive. Hopefully for the viewers as well, but definitely for us that were that were in that world. You know, just the characters that we're surrounded by. And Steve's attention to detail, I guess, even with like, you know, all the supporting artists or extras, and just making sure everything feels real and, and feels right, meant that in a way, it kind of takes some of the pressure off your own shoulders. It's just your job to kind of be in that world that he's written and, you know, he's shepherding with his eye. And, and um, you know, with people like John opposite you and Bill Camp and all these, you know, amazing actors. 
I guess, yeah, it's just about kind of being there with them and, and listening to them and just absorbing that in a way. And I know it's a, probably a rather tedious question and gets asked a lot, but your accent is, is, your American accent is flawless in this, or it seems so to me. Did you have to work hard at that? Did you get coaching, or is it the fact that you're living out there Actually, now? I remember I said I called up Steve just before we were about to start shooting. Do you remember that? It was the middle of Hurricane Sandy. And we were, when we were filming, the hurricane happened. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, and we had to have a hotel evacuated and all this kind of stuff. It was crazy. Um, but anyway, I, I called him up just before we started filming. I was like, I can't do this accent, man. <laughs> like, how can I bring an accent coach on set? And Steve said, listen, I understand what you're saying. The answer is no. And so <laughs> it's like... A good decision. Cool, yeah, which, which is a very good decision. And, um, and yeah, I guess I just had to kind of throw myself into it. Um, but he kept it up all the time. You when did. he talked to you I, during I the day, I didn't hear this accent his, again. Yeah, uh, we, he, we he never done. talked like yeah. this. Yeah, that helped. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> so it's him. Yeah, <laughs> no, when we, you know, we're talking about other things. Yeah. I think the crew never heard it, so... The, yeah, it was kind of weird, because you kind of become like friends with people, day. and then they feel like you've betrayed them. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, I feel like, what the fuck are you doing? What? The whole thing, as I understand it, was shot on location in New York. Can you say, perhaps, Stephen, what that, what that brings? I mean, it, obviously, it looks authentic, but you could shoot in studios. Yeah. Why did you do it that I way? I think it's, you know, it's all part of the, you know, the, the same thing that we've been talking about, and that's creating something that's in the moment. I mean, Riz was just talking about it, about being in the moment, and you know, mentioned that I would surround him with extras who were right. And, 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 and to me, this story is about moments, key, you know, key moments, and then sort of the kind of moments that you don't even see in a lot of shows, you know, sort of the moments on either side of the, the plot points that you, have to, that you have to have. And so shooting in New York was part of that. We, we wanted to go to as many of the real places as we could. You know, we built some sets, like that, that precinct that, that, that shows here. We, um, it's based of, uh, on a real precinct on 82nd Street. We shot it inside at an abandoned post office on 8th Avenue. But it was created to look just like it. And we were there a long time. I mean, we, we spent a lot, a lot of days and nights in there. And it became, it felt totally real. I mean, it, was, it wasn't like, you know, yeah, I mean. It felt like we were in prison for eight months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Crazy. And then shooting on the streets of New York, I mean, all that stuff, uh, you know, with, with, um, with uh, Naz and Andrea and the car. You know, I mean, it's horrible to shoot to shoot that stuff, but you got to do it. You know, we could have done it in a studio with a green screen mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, you, <laughs> I said it was horrible. Well, you were in a car. I was like, you know, uh, on the truck uh, pulling the car, but, it, you know, it was tough, right? Mm -hmm. And, it, but I think that it all, it all shows and I think it all, I think for the actors, it's got to help, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, 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 to be shooting in the real locations. We shot in the, did you, sorry, did you mention you shot in the Queen's Detention Centre? Uh, I did yes, not. Yeah. I did yeah. not mention it, but yeah, yeah we weren't. We should, and that was a functional prison. Correct. Like we would be, yeah. we'd be finishing a take, and then we'd be kind of, and you take a wrong turn, and someone from <laughs> the location would go, no, no, you don't want to go there. <laughs> you know, that way. And yeah. you, and sometimes remember, we'd stop the shoot so prisoners could file across through hallways and stuff. And yeah, yeah. They dressed them in really bright, like orange and black I know, striped it, 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 yeah. things, yeah. so that if you, if any, you know, so. You can spot them online. But yeah, it was, it was crazy. We were, in a, we were filming in a working prison. Yeah. And I assume that makes a difference for, for performance. It just feels you were in the right place to be doing the right thing. I think it just makes sense that if you're going to try to do something that's realistic, you should at least start with, you know, it's, like, it's kind of the easiest decision to make is to go to the place, you yeah. know, and shoot there rather than trying to recreate it somehow. Um, so, so we did that as much as possible. And, and you mentioned there's also a, one thing that struck me was there appeared to be a lot of small but speaking parts in it. Was that a, a conscious decision in the script? And why did you want to do it that way? The small parts? Yeah, there, there's lots of people. There's who, like 200 of them um, yeah. uh, over the course of the nine hours. But um, no, I think it just that that just came out in the writing somehow. Um, but the, the, the trick with, with those is, you know, it's easy to write a little one line part. You still have to look at 20 actors to play it. You know, so that just the sheer amount of time it, it, it takes to look at, you know, 10, 15, 20 people for each of those 200 parts, you know, you do the math, it takes a long time. Yeah. But it was important because, you know, I mean, I think we talked about this once, you know, I mean, something like that could ruin the scene. Yeah. You know, if it's not, it, it, you could be doing everything right in your main, you know, and if the other side isn't, it, you know, 
it's not going to work. So it was Im it's, a, it's important. We had a great, uh, who was the great Chinese guy that we had? Oh, you know, the Chinese guy. We, I had a, we had a part of a Chinese doctor. Where, uh, I can't remember which episode that is. It's in a couple of episodes, actually. But he, we, we, I, I saw these guys doing, you know, auditions, and they were like doing Chinese guys, and <laughs> it was, it was horrifying, you know. And and I was really kind of despairing about it. And then we we, we went and found the location that we shot at, which was a real Chinese doctor, and he was there showing us, you know, he was going to rent us our space, the space. And I think I asked you, I said, you think maybe he can do it, you know. He's never acted before, but maybe he can do it. Is that the real? Yeah, Doctor Two. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, a, he's a real guy. He's a guy. He's a doctor. <laughs> when, he's, when he's looking at your, he thing, took my ear. He put his hand oh inside of it. He was movie. like, I was like, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> he slapped. You know, he was he was genius. Did it make a difference? Oh, are you kidding? Oh, oh. <laughs> I was cured afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, well, this guy's, you know, he's 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 like a beyond. He was, you know, he's. He was he, right and wrong. Was, we was were all great. just. We were doing improv stuff with him. Yeah, all the time. Like, it was fantastic. Don't <laughs> worry, oh, right, you just shut up. Because like, it was <laughs> really like, I don't know. I mean, how do you do an examination? You're yeah. an acupuncturist, you know, herbalist guy. I don't but know how to do ear. that. So you get the real guy. Yeah. We were surprised that he, he had to look at my the ears ear for my foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what he told you. Yeah. <laughs> I believed him. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about stones, uh, sort of ticks and foibles, all the strange things. Were so, they all written on the page? It's all written with, you know. Well, sorry, I mean, in, in the original Criminal Justice, you know, Peter Moffat's version, he does have eczema. And, and we kind of took it further, but, <laughs> but it started with Peter. I mean, it, and it's a great, I felt that it was a really great symbol of where this guy fits in society. And then John just... Uh, Embraced it, I guess you could say. You know, um, I have no choice. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I think it was a great thing. I mean, I mean, I have to say, I never said this to Steve, but when I was reading it and when the guy was doing my feet, I was thinking like, I, this is really a good part for Charles Lawton. You know, I was like, this is like a Charles. Lawton. But it was, you know, it's it's a, just a great. It was. I mean, one day I had it all over my face, and I was walking down the street, and like. Of course, you know, some people looked at me and some people looked away or whatever, but it does change how people look at you, you know, if it's, if you're not covering it up. And uh, I just thought it was another great touch. Like, like, they have so many things within it, you know, and uh, just, you know, you show, you know, people have problems and, be, and sometimes it's related to what they do. Uh, Jane. You've worked on both sides of the Atlantic. You're, you're back over here now. This obviously is a, a U.S. production. Is there any material difference these days between a, a show made in Britain and a show made in the States? Um, I, I think that I think this piece is just different from many other television pieces. Um, I think, as Steve said earlier, he approached the whole thing um, as as just a really, really long film. Um, and and went at it as such, uh, and I I think the um, the ability for I mean I learned so much from the whole process I have to say, and I I think the ability for a broadcaster to put everything really so much into the hands of you know one central artist in it you know Steve. Um, wrote it with Richard and was an executive producer on the piece that was across everything and directed, as he said, all, all but one of the episodes. Um, and, and we had the space to do that in. And I've yet to see that happen in the UK. And I, I think the results on the screen really show that, um, you know, that meticulous attention to detail that, that you are able to provide if you have that space and and, and, and that approach, um, and that, that was different. But I think that was very particular, really, to this piece and Steve and to HBO, perhaps. And as you mentioned, it has a, again, it seems to me, a very distinctive visual style. Was that something that you were set upon from the start? It looks to me a lot of the camera angles seem to be quite low or it from... Kind of it kind of developed. I mean, there are three different DPs on, on over the course of the show. Um, uh, 
most of this one was, was shot by Robert Elswit, who's a world-class you know, guy, a DP, uh, fantastic. And he, his style is a little bit different than Igor Martinovic, who, who shot uh, a few episodes, and Fred Elms, who shot a few uh, episodes after that. So I was the one, I guess, who had to kind of make <laughs> those very different sort of, um, I don't know, what they would naturally do, approach it. But I think it, it was really, it really got, uh, I won't say set, but certainly it was on, on the road to the way it looked and felt with the first episode that we shot, you know, um, which is 80% of, of this. And, and, you know, there is a transition there, and I don't think you really notice it, you know, where we actually started shooting two years later. So, um, with with different crew, um, but I think that the uh, I did really I really do like those films of the '70s that are shot in New York, and you know if there was any one influence, it was probably that you know the Sidney Lumet type films, um, and I like things that are dark, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, both, but yeah. but 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 visually too, you know. Um, just before we get some questions from the audience, um, I wondered, and I guess this goes to everyone, in the course of making this and the research you did, were you shocked or taken aback by anything you found out about the justice system? Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and what sort of things? Well, I mean, one thing in, in particular, I mean, I, I think every, everything, really. I mean, if you go, which we did, and I think I, may, I tried to get almost everybody, actors and crew, to go to arraignment court to just see what, what goes on there. Arraignment court... Uh, in the U.S., it goes on 365 days a year. Um, I don't know how many they process, but if it's like every three minutes, it's, it's, it's another person being processed. So it's a, it's rather startling, it's, and, the, and the atmosphere is almost like a circus. It's it's not quiet and staid. It's <laughs> very noisy because they're trying to like get to the next one before they finish the last one. I mean, so you, this feeling of it being a factory is something that you come away from. Um, uh, and then, you know, we, we went to Rikers, and we all went to Rikers, and Rikers Island is where you're detained when you're, uh, when you can't make bail, and, or you're sentenced to, a, 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 say, less than a year. Um, so, um, and there's 10,000 guys, 10,000, well, male and female, 10,000 detainees and inmates, um, and you come away from that with, you know, this feeling of, Please God, don't, I don't ever want to get arrested and not make bail and have to, and have to go there. It's it's scary, you know. Um, and <laughs> uh, and a lot of the things that Richard and I were writing about came from talking to people who had been there. Um, I won't go into what those things are because they, they happen on on the, on the um, you know in the story, and I don't want to give it away. But the, these things that were going on. Um, after we had shot this stuff, it started coming out in the papers. And in the last year or two, um, there have been many, many s news stories about what's happening at Rikers and, 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 the, you know, and the reforms they're trying to, to put into effect. And for anyone else, you Riz, I know you did a lot of research. Did yeah, anything I mean, just stayed with you? Rikers was, because the strange thing happens if you detain people who can't make bail <coughs> because bail's been set very high, so that's murder or, you know, cr you know quite intense stuff with people who are in for a year, mm. who are for quite small, petty offenses. So that already starts up crazy kind of food chain mm. and a predatory atmosphere. Um, and then also just the length of time that you can be detained awaiting trial. The story of Khalif Bowder came out when mm. we were filming. Mm. Right. Um, it was a young man who was accused of stealing somebody's backpack. Right. Um, he was detained awaiting trial for three years just because of the backlog of cases. Um, you know, kid with no previous, he came out and he uh, he committed suicide from the PTSD of that. I mean, he, he, he wound up being in solitary for 800 days because uh, uh, he would get into fights to, to try and uh, defend himself. Yeah, defend it's himself. Like, they call him a herb. Like, who's a herb? You know, if you're green, and there's a herb there. Then you're like, they just it's it's uh, the time it's crazy. That, you're, that you're waiting is not counted. You're supposed to have a speedy trial, six months. But when the court says the people are not ready after three months, that doesn't count, that you were in prison for three months. So because he didn't cop a plea, which he could have, and uh, that's what happened to him. And I think that we read that 
And I actually was, I, I was set up a meeting with him actually to, to speak with him. And then he said he, he wasn't up to it and then that, that happened. But I felt like what Steve and Richard were writing about was right in that audit, was right there. It was like right in front of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we both read it. Well, it was, you know, it was coming from, you know, talking to people who had been there. Yeah. And, you know. Well, um, we had this conversation, actually, because they, these guys cast Paymon um, for that role. She's such a, just such a fine actor, but, of course, you can hear his accent. It's kind of got the, tw the, the tinge of Farsi. But, of course, in Afghanistan, they speak Dari as well, which is a similar kind of accent. And, and because they wanted the character to be Pakistani and also because the authenticity of uh, I'm Pakistani, well, I thought, well, there's actually a lot of Afghan refugees that have grown up in Peshawar in Pakistan. So into my mind, and what we decided is he's Afghani background, he speaks Dari, but he's grown up in Peshawar. He's from Pakistan. So when Sir John Stones asks, um, he says, I'm half Pakistani, and the mother's Punjabi, which means there wasn't an arranged marriage, it was a love marriage. <laughs> so, Um, very little. I mean, very little in the way of, of rehearsals. Um, uh, right? I mean, I can't, I can't even remember. We would rehearse on the day, generally. We would spend the morning rehearsing, and then we would shoot, you know? And um, uh, um, the, I'd say the one exception to that in the scenes that we saw, that you saw tonight, was the discovery of the knife uh, scene um, in the precinct. We actually rehearsed that. We did, I remember. Because it was a very complicated bit of choreography and conversations going on at the same time. And I wanted to make sure that it was written in a way that it could be, where that dialogue could overlap. And I, I could kind of tell in the, you know, by looking at the page, but I couldn't really tell what, what, what the action that would have to be going on. So we, we did rehearse that. We rehearsed that uh, well before we shot it, um, a couple of weeks before we shot it. Just. Uh, in a plain, kind of in a plain setting. Um, but other than that, I, I generally, I don't really like to do a lot of rehearsing. Um, and I don't think either of you like it that much, right? Uh, though everybody wasn't around. I Depends. Mean, I yeah. had a few months, so I just did a lot of research and met a lot of lawyers and went to court and did all this stuff and spent a lot of time with Steve and then talked to Richard. So that was a way of rehearsing. And then, you know, then you're going to meet on the day anyway. You know, and that was, and, and you know, but you have to be really prepared then to have that encounter. You know, so that's a different way of rehearsing. But I think you absorb a lot from the person who is leading. You know, and you know, even a fitting can be a rehearsal. You know, and it's. Uh, and there were a lot of people who did help me. You know, a lot of lawyers who helped me. And we um, didn't do read-throughs because it was all shot. So cross-boarded, you know, all the episodes were um, in amongst each other that there would never have been a moment to pull it out, really, and say, so, okay, now's the moment. It was, it was just continuous. It wasn't like episodic television. Uh, the other thing, too, was we had the script. Um, yeah, they, they, were all, they were all written. I mean, it wasn't like we were shooting one episode and still writing, you know, episode five and then shooting two and six. We weren't doing that. We didn't start. I mean, obviously, I did one. And then, but once we did two through eight, they were all written um, and rewritten and rewritten and ready to go, I think, by the time we started shooting. Jane? Um, yes, so... Um, when uh, we were doing this as a pilot, um, Steve um, uh, talked about James Gandolfini, who he had worked with previously, and obviously who um, uh, was almost part of HBO. Um, and so for the pilot, um, James came on uh, to play Stone. Um, it was not the same pilot um, that you saw there. It finished in a slightly different place. Um, and uh, to his amusement, discomfort, and bewildered amusement, Jim was also an executive producer. Um, and, and I remember, actually, we were 
Jim and I were squashed into um, the back garden of the Carnes house. Um, and Jim was perched up on one of those big kind of like, you know, director chair things that you have. Um, and he, he, turned, he turned to me, and I'm not even going to try and do his voice, and he said, I just don't get it, Jen. I just don't get what this executive producing is about. And I said, Jim, you're fine. You sit there and look and feel like a baked potato for most of the time. And he went, okay, I've got it. Um, and uh, it, it, he, he, the piece was um, important to him. He agonized over all sorts of aspects of it for himself. And um, uh, Steve had to work hard to get him in to do it. And um, he, it, it was an important piece for him. Um, but tragically, he, he passed. And um, and uh, it, before the rest of the scripts were written, really, I think that's right, Steve, isn't it? You, you and Richard hadn't got so far into well, the rest of the scripts, yeah. Yeah. So it had a whole yeah. new iteration, yeah. and Stone became something very, yeah. very different. Yeah. Um, it took a long time. Um, I, again, it started out very innocently as just one, and then I convinced uh, Richard to do a second one, and then a third one, and so it was kind of um, you know gradual the process. But it, by the time we got to about the third one, um, I felt we really need an overall structure here. You know, it was it was nice to kind of just sort of wing it for a while. Um, you know, so we. We both spent a lot of time thinking about that and doing it. Um, I, for my part, I mean, I probably spent six months like out, outlining it until I was happy with it. Um, so, and I had the time because everything was sort of on hold anyway at that point. So, um, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very important to me. I mean, even in a film, to be really, um, you know, satisfied or convinced that the structure is right, um, that the ending is right, that, that, that the, you know, the way it develops is right. So I just, for most of the things I do, I spend a, more time doing that than I, than I spend writing it. And um, I think the same, same was true here, just multiplied four times, you know. It, 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 I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't do anything in, unless I can convince myself that I know exactly where this thing is going. Did you even no. throughout the whole directing and even in the edit, you were still pinching and changing? Yeah. And Little thing, but that yeah. allows you, sort of like what John was saying, if you come prepared, then you can make these little adjustments easily. And I think that that's the same here. We, we had something very solid yeah. shot, so, so yeah. to make changes in the editing was, was possible. Yeah.